show. What up, guys? Blah. Going black and white for Blah. that ass. Okay. Blah. Rastafari. <laughs> We're here. Lanolin. 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 Name huh. that movie. Name that movie. Can you name it? Oh, I know it. Lanolin. What is that from? <laughs> You don't even know. I do. He I doesn't even know. I swear on everything, I know what movie it's from. No, I'm going to say it again. Say it. Lanolin? Lanolin. And let's see who you don't knows. Know. I literally know exactly where it's from. It's my favorite movie in the world. Coming to America? No. Nope. It's my favorite comedy in the world. E like, even though Coming to America is one of, is number two. E I don't know. It's, you know who it is. I swear you know. I know it. I know it, Lanolin. but I can't. It's like, I have nap hair. Yeah, Alexi just took a nap. I have total nap hair. <laughs> <laughs> Wake up. Wait, I gotta turn this light down. I look crazy. Um, uh, yeah, I just took a nap because uh, I was tired. Lanolin? Lanolin. Does anybody know what movie that's from? I'm looking here. Nobody's announced it yet. Yeah. It um, okay, so today, guys, we are talking about... Okay, that She's might gonna, have to go away. Kill me. <laughs> that might have to go away. Uh, all right, tonight we are talking about the difference maker between people who freaking crush it in life yep. and people who do kind of like, eh, just okay. Yep. Number two, we're going to answer some of your questions yeah, that you are. guys asked and you sent in and you didn't get asked from last time. We're going to answer some of those. And yep. number three, yep. we have, wait. We have our book winner from last week yep. that we're going to announce. We're announcing it. Our advanced copy of our book <laughs> like that. And then number four, we got a special announcement as well huh. for all of you out there. And guys, we have one more copy of this book left for one more person. So if you share this video. Hearts, you, hearts, hearts, hearts. Hearts make us do this dance. Hearts make us do this dance. It didn't go all the way through. I didn't go all the way across. I just He's came like that. He's like doing it right in my ears. I just came well. like slightly. Um, so we have one more copy of this book. If you want to be entered to win an advanced copy of our brand new book, you better share this video. You better write something awesome about it. And you better be awesome. What first inspired you to be this way? That's a nice question, Abraham. Um, crazy? Yeah. You mean crazy? And what, you know, I what think way crazy. do you mean exactly? It's like, what uh, inspired you to be nuts? Exactly. I think they were actually talking to you. Because oh. you definitely are pretty nuts. Are pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you for your hearts, guys. Hey, Christy. Stress 22 in the yeah, building. Yeah, yeah, Marie Marie. Abraham, you two are awesome. See, he's talking to both of us. Oh, uh, awesome. Wait, yeah. did you tell them what's happening at the end? Did you tell them that I did. Guys, we have a secret Hurt, super surprise. Did I? Maybe I didn't. We have a super, super secret surprise we're sharing at the end. Yep. At the end of this video. I feel like this is like an 80s dance. Was it? Uh-uh. I think you have it off. It's like this. I feel like this should or, have been an or it was like dance. But shouldn't this you, be a you remember this? Stamp? No, that shouldn't be. That's just, you look like... That's like, Kaka, the Birdman. The Birdman no, didn't do that. that Birdman no, that Birdman never 90s, did that. Early no. 2000s. You shouldn't do that dance ever. <laughs> like, just looking at, I'm looking at the camera. I think... Seeing you doing that. I think it's just missing really great music. No, I mean, <laughs> I think that this <laughs> doesn't work It's ever. like, you gotta see what I'm doing no, with my shoulders. I know, but too. the shoulders is like here. It's, look, it's called the Penn State. No, my... you look crazy. <laughs> Don't do that ever. <laughs> this is what happens when I take a nap. Mm -hmm. I get weird. I need right? all kind of energy. <laughs> yeah. um, and we're drinking alkaline water. Yeah, we are. This is my water jug, guys. Yep. And today I bought a um, alkaline shower thing. Uh, yeah, a shower filter. A pretty awesome shower filter. So now my hair is gonna be alkaline. Yeah, it is. And the although point, I don't wash my hair very often. The point of all of this is to. Um, because 2017 for us is about total, complete, the embodiment of what it means to be the best version of ourselves from the inside out. Inside out. And We've I, been working on this for a long time. And this, this for a long, long time. time. But now we're going to go all up in there. Like this. And we're going to clean up. We're going to take a shower from the inside. Inside out shower. And so we're doing like cryotherapy. We're doing hydrotherapy. We're, we're doing... doing What's the other um, thing we just did? Sexual therapy. That. Yeah, oh yeah. All but, night, all day. Yeah, you know I'm saying? No, we actually. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do it! Don't bring that dance back in here. That dance is blocked for good. That, that should never come That's back. That's gonna be my new thing. Uh -uh. 
<laughs> that should never be your thing. Be like my call, caca. Yeah. No. no, we have a friend who actually, or uh, some somebody who we know who does a thing at the end of their videos, which is absolutely corny as shit. I'm not saying that that is, but like. I think uh, you just called my bird move corny. I didn't call it corny. <laughs> Glenn Money is in the building. Glenn, we got a lot of people on here who are the home me's. Yeah. Love you guys. All right, so let's just jump in. Let's do it. Um. Preston, in your humble opinion, what would you say is the one thing mm -hmm. that separates people who kick butt and crush it from like, man, you have an okay life? Besides, of course, like mastery, which we <laughs> is really huge. Yeah, the one thing, I, it's not, okay, so there isn't one thing, and that one thing is action. Um, but it's many things, because before action, we must have awareness. Mm -hmm. And before awareness, or what, what supports awareness is alignment. Mm -hmm. So action just for the sake of action is you, you're just a chicken with his head cut off. I've been that before. Um, a but, lot. But aligned <laughs> action, aligned <laughs> action is a game changer. Yes. Yeah, you know, I like that. You know, because Preston and I talk about this quite a bit. Like there's a lot of people. Guys, we are at the point of the year. It's December. Mm -hmm. What well, I don't even know what today is. 14th. 15th, 14th. Somewhere it's there. somewhere in the middle of December. Yes. We are close to the time of year when every single human is like, I'm going to be healthy. This is the year, y'all. I'm going to look what? better. What? Buck up some cubs. I'm going to learn some stuff. This is the year, y'all. This is the year. My business is going to take I'm off. I'm losing 40 pounds. I'm going to get the partner. I'm dreams. making 40K in a month. I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to stop having secret sex with my ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. All of the above. <laughs> right? So everybody... And we love it. We love like visioning. We love like get it. Yes, we love thinking big. We love putting it out there. But here's the thing that I think most people miss. And we talk about this all the time. Mm -hmm. They don't take action on mm -mm. the right things. Yes. The things that move the needle on the thing that they say they want. Yes. A lot of people go like, I want, I want, I want, I want, Ooh, I, I want, want that. I want. Oh, don't do that dance want, though. Don't do that want, dance. You can want. I want. I want, 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 right? People want, people want stuff. Don't do that dance. You do have weird dances uh -uh. too. Um, people want stuff, but they don't want to be the type of person that it takes mm -hmm. to get the type of want that yes. they like. Yes. That they life. That they. That they want. Yes. Life in their life. <laughs> so. <laughs> So, right. no, this is so, so really the differentiator for me is when people actually go, you know what, here's what's really important to me, here's what it's going to take, and I am willing to do whatever it takes yes. to do it. So and it's it's action, but with like this crazy commitment underneath. Yes, exactly. Right? And what's interesting is, is that us humans do this funny little thing where, let's say we declare this big dream, right? And I declare. we say we're going to take action, but we only take the actions that are still within our comfort zone. Yeah, or that feel easy. Yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll do the the super low hanging fruit, but we won't go out there on the skinny branches and, and, and risk falling looking stupid. Yeah. Or failing, yeah. right? Because we want to save face. That's is the, the ego's job is to keep us safe and comfortable in our little package box where everything is known, right? So that- Controlled. Yeah, exactly. That, that, um, that thing that, um, humans do where we want so much certainty so we say with 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 this hole we say we want so much but then our little legs don't do anything no no because they want to stay certain they do and guys this is really important because it, what he's talking about is going out on the skinny branches what that means and what that looks like is if your goal or your vision let's say for 2017 is i want to lose the weight this year is finally going to be the year you can say that you can even take action and like go to the gym three times a week. But what you put in your cupboards mm. and what you put in your refrigerator mm. and what you put in your mouth and your mind and your mind is all affecting your weight. And a lot of people want to do the easy work. Like, yeah. yes, I can go to the gym. I can get a trainer. I can do that. And then two weeks in when it's not working, yes. they give up. They stop. Why? Because they're not willing to truly be committed to the result. Yes. And in order to get the result, I want you to hear this. You have to be 
truly committed, 100% committed, not like half and go, oh, well, I don't know why I'm not getting what I want. Yeah, I'm committed as long as it's comfortable. Is I'm what committed you... <laughs> as long as it's easy. I'm yeah, yeah. committed as long as I'm not stretched. I'm committed as long as I don't really have to change my life or my lifestyle for it. Uh. And this is what a lot of people don't get. And we coach people all the time on how to do social media and how to build a brand online, all that stuff. And we see people who we don't coach or else we'd fire them as clients. But we see people who we don't coach who start, mm -hmm. right? They come out of the woodworks and we see videos and we see posts and then guess what happens? Two weeks, three weeks in, a month, yeah. two months later, they fall off. Yeah. Why? Because while well, they weren't getting the followers or they weren't getting yeah. instant fame or success <clears throat> and it's like, guys, consistency, committed consistency is key. Yeah. And if you are not willing to be a hundred thousand million percent committed it, you don't deserve what you want yep period and, and like hard truth but that's what what's you don't deserve it. what's very telling in scenarios like that is where the true intention was anyway yeah so a lot of people come and they say Preston I want to do what you do I want to do what you and Alexi can do but sometimes and it's not all the time but sometimes I can see right under it immediately I yeah. can see what you you don't necessarily want to do what I'm doing because what I'm up to is, is long hours. What I'm up to yeah. takes, you know, some serious commitment. People don't want to do half the shit that we do. What I'm up to <laughs> takes putting yourself in, in, in the line of fire for arrows. And some of those arrows have like, you know, poison snake darts on the end of them. And some of them, Peter Kelly! Yeah, Peter! Uh, what, um, up? what up? Guys, if you don't follow Peter, follow Peter. She's the bomb. Yes. Do it. So, so, so what, what I notice sometimes is, is the intention, the true intention always comes out. It always shows itself. What's done in the dark will always come to the light. Always. And so some, what you're really saying is, is you want the significance. You want to feel and, and be praised for something. Yeah. So you, you'll do the thing, the, the dance in front of everybody and you'll fake it. Mm. And regurgitate some quotes and do some stuff like that because you want the significance. But are you there you know, at six, five in the, in the morning? Are you there at 10 at night yeah. still working? Are you in the other room taking a nap so you could get back up to do a Facebook Live and, and send a thousand emails like that? People don't get what it actually takes. No, they see the glory, but they do not see what it takes to yep. make it happen. And everybody wants the glory, but they don't want to do the work. Yep. And, and quite frankly, and I'll say it again because it just deserves to be said, if you are not 100% committed and you are not 100% in with all of yourself, yep. not just the easy parts that you're like, yeah, that, that's easy, I can do that, you don't deserve to have what you want because what you want needs you, is calling you to be bigger than your circumstances, yes. it's calling you to be bigger than your excuses, it's calling you to be bigger than your bullshit. And we can only say this because we were part of the bullshit conversation for a really <laughs> long time where we let our excuses win, where we let um, circumstances get the best of us, where we let all the things like life take over. And then that's why our life didn't work. Oh, well, we just didn't have time or, mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, I just don't feel like it today. And, yeah, we could totally have lived that life, but we wouldn't be where we are today. And so the hack for that, guys, and by the way, leave comments, shoot those little hearts and darts and all that stuff out there because it gets us all pumped up and riled up, right? So I'll do my um, bird dance for you. Yes, but don't do that. Don't do what that. What if I dance. add like a swirl? You, you messed me up. I lost my... my you said the hack. Mm. Ah, the hack for that <laughs> is stop. <laughs> the hack for that is to stop making... It about you. Yeah. The moment, the moment you, you attach your vision and your dream, that medicine, that thing that's on your heart, that thing that's calling you forward, the moment you attach that to something bigger than you, the moment you understand that there are people suffering all day, every day, that don't have the wisdom or the medicine that you particularly carry, the moment you can put that out there, it's so much easier for all the mothers out there. The mothers know because if it was just you, you'd, you'd wake up at 10. You wake up at <laughs> yeah. 12 noon. You sleep in. But when it comes to your babies, see your babies, is, it's something bigger than you. So you'll, you'll make a way out of no way when, it's, when, it's, when it comes to your family, right? Frida, that's my cousin. Aww. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jess is on, what up? Yeah, so I want to talk about that because, you know, a lot of people, um, and I forget who commented on this. 
I saw it today on one of my Instagram videos, but she's like, hey, because the video was your someday is now. Mm. Like, stop waiting for someday for all the circumstances to be right, for everything to be falling into place perfectly. Yep. That will never happen. Someday is now. It's here. What do you choose to do with this moment? <gasps> and she said, I am so inspired. I love this. But I have kids. I have a seven-month-old. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. How do you, what would you say to somebody like me? Yep. And you know, that's a great point. Life happens, right? Life happens and life looks different for a lot of people. For some, it's a disability. For yes. some, it's five kids. For some, it's yes. on welfare. For some, it's less than a dollar a day. For some, it's, um, you know, any extraordinary circumstance. Life happens and we get that. But guess what? You are a human being and you have choice on how you be with life. Yes. And yes, you might have a seven month old, but you also have nap times. Yes. You also have time when they need to sleep. And even if you're doing it by yourself, you can take those 30 minutes, that hour, those two hours yes. and go, how do I want to use my time? Instead of being on social media, instead of going on Pinterest, instead mm -hmm. of doing whatever you're doing, how do you want to prioritize your time? And so many people go, I just don't have time. I'm like, yo. You've got the same 24 hours Richard Branson has, Beyonce has, like mm -hmm. anybody. And you can do the same stuff if you choose to do it. And it, it's just, it's, I can like <laughs> rant on this for so long. Um, productivity is like one of my jams. Anyone who knows me knows that. Efficiency is one of my jams. And if you want to hack on how to find more time, mine for your time. Yes. Literally, spend 72 hours and clock everything you do. You will be shocked at how much time you're wasting mm -hmm. doing dumb stuff that you say doesn't matter to you. And you, <laughs> I guarantee you, like we all have 168 hours in a week and most people are, you know, maybe working 40 to 80 hours. 80 hours is a lot. Mm -hmm. Even if you're working on the hard end, 80 hours a week, you still have just under, you have 84 hours left. What are you doing with those 84 hours, right? What you doing? What you doing? What you so, doing? So, mind for your time, and this is really important. Everybody I've worked with that has the time excuse, I have them do a time journal. Mm -hmm. Every hour, clock what you're up to. Every 30 minutes, clock what you're up to. Every time you open the laptop, clock it. Because so many people don't realize that they're just wasting their time away, wasting their life away, and using that as the excuse as to why their life's not working. Yep, yep. And quite frankly, no excuses. I did a podcast interview today with uh, Jay Wong, um, amazing dude. Shout out dude. to Jay. Shout out to Jay. He's great. Um, and we talked about this. You know, we talked about how I, at one point I used to have compassion for the excuse. Mm -hmm. You know, I really did. I used to like hear it out, like the kids, the disability, the whatever. But traveling the world and meeting people all over the globe has wiped every single excuse for me out of the book. When you meet people like Kyle Maynard, who is born with no arms and no legs, and he's climbed Mount Everest and Mount Kilimanjaro, yep. and he's an ambassador for the Wounded Warrior Project, uh. and he speaks around the world, Blah. inspiring people with his story, Rustified. tell me what your excuse is. I'm sorry, what was your excuse again? Lanolin. 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 Austin Powers? Nope. Close. What is it? Close. But just like, how, how, how much weight does your excuse actually have? Because seriously, like there are some people out there yes. who came up from some extraordinary circumstances mm, get and are rocking life. Rocking and, it. And uh, actually, Adam Roa, I'm going to pull this up. What's up, Evan? Evan uh, Kardimov. Kardimov. Um, Adam Roa, our and, homie. And don't forget to uh, share this, guys, because yeah, this. one of the people who won this book, I just saw that you're on this. So you We're going to announce you. One of you won this book from last week's sharing. <laughs> Um, oh, we'll see it's so hot. who it is. We don't know who it is, I know. but I saw that that person is on right now. So right. share this one, this one to win the, the one book. for next week. The next one. So our homie, um, Adam Roa shared this today and I love it. So his, I can't show it to you cause it's going to be backwards, but, um, you can go to his page. Just read it. it. Um, it says it's a picture of a man like this, who's got, um, two artificial prosthetic legs. And the quote is, people ask how I stay so positive after losing both my legs. I simply ask how they stay so negative with theirs. Oof. Like, oof. 
That's straight oh. fire right there. Oh. I was like, I saw that and I was like, wow. Straight so fire. every time you're complaining about your life, just think about how good you actually have it. Try that on for size because mm -hmm. people are so practiced in misery. They're so practiced in how shitty their life is. They're so practiced <laughs> in how bad everything is, yet they have breath, yet they're watching this thing on a computer or on their iPhone or on their Samsung, yet they have electricity to charge it mm. and their life is so terrible. Mm. All right, I'm done. Mm. She had to. She had to go there. I, had to get I just. It out. I just made sounds the whole time. I had to get mm. that out. Blah. Rastafari. Uh, Christina got it. Christina got it. She got what movie? Lanolin. Say it again. Lanolin. 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 What is it? You'll see. Wait. Um, I'm gonna see if I can see it. Lanolin. Lanolin. Um, no, you're saying it wrong too. Uh, it's Lanolin. Lanolin. Does anybody else know what movie that is from? It is I one of my know favorite it, but movies. I can't. Think about it. That nap para, Jess, you know. Uh -huh. You know how I roll. That nap. And also, guys, if you have any comments or questions, you can put them in there. And if we see them and we can catch them, then we shall answer them. What's up, Livy? I love you so much. You're amazing. Ah, uh, Livy. Yeah. Got um, so many good peeps on here. I'm trying to, like, peep on this comment. Yep. I'll just say what it is. Anchorman! Anchorman. There yes! we go. Yes! Lanolin. Lanolin. I want to be Santiago. on Santiago. Um... Yeah. Whale's vagina. No, I'm pretty sure it means Saint Diego. No, no. <laughs> that Whale's movie vagina. is so good. Anchorman is great. Um, okay. Ron Burgundy. Let's um, answer a couple of these questions. We're going to answer some questions, guys. These questions that came in. So wait, let's just wrap that up in a nice pretty little bow for everyone. Do it. So, the thing that separates the people who are kicking ass and crushing it, who you're looking at and going, I don't know how they're doing it. It's because they get up every day and make a way out of no way because they are fiercely committed to something bigger than themselves yes. that empowers them, that pulls them forward, that freaking calls them in the middle of the night and wakes their asses up and gets them to work. Uh. You want it to work, you gotta work it. Blah. So as 2017 is rounding the corner, do not sell out on yourself. Find a way or fade away. Stop selling out on yourself. Love will find a way. Everything else will find an excuse. For real. Bloop, bloop. So whatever your thing is, whatever your jam is, whatever your goal is, commit <laughs> or don't. Mm. Stop saying you're going to do something that you don't do. Because here's the other thing that happens. Yeah. When you commit to something and you don't follow through and you don't do it, guess what happens to your self-esteem? Down. Law guess what happens to your self-trust? diminishing trust? intent. Goodbye. Law of Goodbye. diminishing intent. Goodbye. The law of diminishing intent states that when you set an intention and you don't follow through, that day after day after day, your 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 intention essentially goes down and yeah. you find yourself looking up three months after January going, oh, I'm back doing the same habits and patterns that I was in 2016. Oh, well, I guess my life Screw will never it. change. I knew this stuff didn't work. I'm not meant for I this. I guess I'm not meant for love and success. and Full moon mm, madness, definitely. It is. But guys, this is really true. So the law of diminishing intent is essentially saying, if you say something, if you commit to something, and you tell yourself, I'm going to do this in 2017, yep. and you don't take action towards it, your brain, your ego, your wounded self continues to see that you are a person that it cannot trust. Yep. And when you lack self-trust, you can never have self-confidence because if you can't trust yourself, how could you ever trust other people? So if you want to develop self-trust, self-love, confidence, like radiating that stuff, yes. you got to be a person of your word and you got to take action. Boom. So I really, really, really want you to get serious, get real, get freaking honest yeah. about what you're actually going to do. Mm -hmm. Don't say you're going to do something and don't do it. Commit or don't. Be yes. in the game or don't. Period. Um. <laughs> Mel Meline. Levy. Melanie. Melanie. Levy. Melanie. Mel oh, Melanie. Yes. That's a cool way to spell it. Yeah, it is. I've that never was like seen a it. word puzzle. <laughs> she said, what do you do when you're in a rut? We are human and cannot always be on a high level. This Take is true. Baby. Take it, baby. This is true, mama. Um, but question. let's, let me just say this. You are the ocean. Christina Farrell's on. Sister. You are the sky. The emotions. Especially those um, that um, don't necessarily um, align or don't feel good. Are just the clouds. Mm -hmm. 
They're just a thunderstorm. Mm -hmm. And so, yes, um, when one is experiencing, you know, a storm, we get to look at that, honor it, experience that experience, and then the thing that would support, and there's many things that would support getting out of a rut, but the thing that supports us is uh, what we say or call reaching for low-hanging fruit, mm -hmm. which is go and do the thing or go watch the movie, or go hang with the people, or go be go to a dog park and play with dogs. Go do the thing Anything. that makes your heart smile. Just reach for the stuff that's so easy that you can get to because what happens is, is when you reach for that, it raises your vibration just a little bit, yeah. all right? And when your vibration is there, if you reach for something else, then it raises it just a little bit, right? And then from there, you go, okay, so, I'm feeling a little better. Maybe, maybe I should go back in and do the thing that had me in, the, you know, or whatever the case may be. But the point is, is that um, it is very difficult. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's very difficult to go from absolutely depressed and in a rut to full-fledged extreme joy. But let's talk about that. Yeah. Absolute depressed and in a rut. What you label yourself, you then therefore become. So be really careful of yes. how you and the people around you are labeling yourself. Real talk. Um, there is a book called uh, You Are the Placebo that did all these studies on people who got cancer and all these diseases. And, you know, person one went back to their home and, you know, mold in their sorrow about cancer. And everyone around them was like, I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. and, you know, treating them like they're sick. And dying. And, and that person, it's like in the first two chapters of the book, that person passed away. And here's the funny thing. And the autopsy came back. The person actually didn't have cancer. It was a false diagnosis on the doctor's part. In that same chapter, they talk about somebody with an opposing story. Diagnosed with cancer, goes and says, I'm not even going to like, I'm going to take care of myself and acknowledge myself. However, I'm not going to be a cancer victim. I'm going to live my life now to the fullest. I'm going to show up with joy. And that person fully recovered, yeah. fully recovered and healed themselves just based on the way that they expose themselves to joy in their life. So if you're in a rut, AKA stagnant, what that means is there's stagnant energy in your field, mm -hmm. inside your body. And what happens when we get stagnant is we haven't been moving. We haven't been doing enough lately. So if you're feeling stuck and in a rut, move. Yes. Get up and move. Get up and change a direction. Change something about how you do something. Shoulders back. Yeah, your breath. Breathing into the stomach. Deep breath in. Literally. Into nature. Dancing. Changing your body. Sun gaze. Sun, like. Drink more water. Yes. Do like, something different. Take a different way to work. Go to a different place for lunch. Switch Read it up. a different book. Switch the game up. Move your body and move your energy around because that's all stagnation is. Mm -hmm. That's all a rut is, is that you're doing the same shit over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. And if you want to get that energy moving, yes. move. Move it. You and are the mover. That starts with a decision. Yeah. So make the decision and then do all that stuff. Yeah. Somebody, this is just for you and somebody asked a similar question over here. So Sweet. You... Okay. Melissa Browning asked, for Alexi, I was just wondering how you found a way to overcome your sexual assault. I experienced my own sexual abuse by a family member as a child and I feel like the trauma and shame and guilt still follows me. Um, great question, Melissa. So. It was a process for me. So for those of you who don't know, I experienced sexual assault and rape when I was 20 years old. And a big part of my journey, a big part of what I do right now is actually fully attached to that because I ignored it for six years and pretended like it didn't happen, pretended like it didn't affect me. Um, but deep down, I felt guilty for it. I felt like it was my fault. I felt so much shame around it. I felt dirty. I mean, you name it, I experienced it. Um, but I experienced it in silence and I experienced it by myself and I kept telling myself just ignore it and it'll go away. And what I recognized was at 26, I did some deeper work and really started going into the darkness and going into those areas of my life that I had kind of, uh, closed off. Key point. She's leaned in. Yeah. I went towards it instead of away from it because I realized at that point that I had totally shut myself off from people and was basically like an ice queen. <laughs> Whatever you run from will chase you. Yeah, and, and I recognized the walls I had built up to protect myself were literally keeping the love that I desired out. So that's what inspired me to move towards it because I knew I had to create a different reality for myself. So it, it was really a process. It was first 
really acknowledging what happened and going through all of it in present moment and recognizing that although I'm reliving it in the present, I'm reliving the story of what happened, not what happened. It's not here right now. It's not currently present with me right now. However, the story I was carrying around was. So I needed to face off with a story because it kept following me going, I'm still here. Mm -hmm. I'm still here. I'm still here. And the minute I just like faced off with it and I literally wrote it all out in a notebook, like every detail I could remember. And as I was writing, more details came out, more stuff was coming out on the paper. And I just started seeing it kind of more objectively. It was outside of me and it was just this story on a piece of paper. And I just sat with it for a while and I started thinking about what that person, the perpetrator, what he must have been going through, what maybe he experienced as a child, mm -hmm. what maybe he, the pain and suffering that he might have been in to have done that to me. Um, and that, it just like changed my whole perspective. And again, this is a process and I've gone through many iterations of that where I've, you know, I've had flashbacks. I've seen someone that kind of looks like him and it'll flash me back to a moment where, you know, it happened. And for me, it's, it's love and compassion and forgiveness has been like the game changer for me. And I first had to forgive myself. Mm -hmm. And you know, it sounds crazy. People are like, what do you mean? Like people who have never experienced sexual abuse don't understand what that means. Like, what do you mean forgive yourself? I put so much pressure on myself that I was so wrong and so guilty and like, I should have known better. I should have, I should have done this. I should have done that. And I had to forgive myself first. And then I really had to look at how I could forgive this human mm -hmm. who was clearly in a lot of pain, who was clearly in a lot of suffering um, and with his own experience. Now, that, I'll just say this, I turned my, my pain into my purpose. I used that whole experience of diving deep into what I had been through to truly connect with other women who had been through the same thing. And here's the crazy thing. I started learning that one out of every three women are sexually abused or molested, and that's only the reports. So I started talking to women because I started speaking openly about it. I, start, I stopped hiding it and pretending like it wasn't there. And I started speaking openly about it from an empowered place. And I started connecting with other women and men who had similar stories. And what happened was I felt like I wasn't alone. I felt like, okay, wow, all right, great. This isn't like the most crazy thing that's ever happened to anyone. It's happened to a lot of people in a lot of crazier ways. And that actually supported me in having compassion for the human race and the human drama and the human struggle. And it led me into this work. So all that to say, I did not experience it from the hand of a family member. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand and can't understand what that must be like to be in the presence of somebody. And I don't know how consistently this person was around, but I, I really invite you to just move into it. Move into it from an objective place and recognize it's not here right now. You can either let it define you or you can let that experience make your purpose and clear a way for a deeper understanding of who you are and why you're here. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line is what happened, happened. And it is what it is. It's terrible. I never wish it upon anyone. However, what you choose to do with it is really your next move. And when you make that next move, I chose to make it a part of my purpose. I started working with women and that led to me doing what I do now. Mm -hmm. And I, I now can be with people in a, in a way that I could have never understood pain and, and hurt and anguish and guilt and shame if I hadn't experienced that. Mm -hmm. So I had to go through what I went through in order to truly work with people in the way that I do. So it's a choice. It's yeah. a choice. So I can say so much more about it, but... A part of our work, and uh, you know, it didn't happen to me, right? But many things have. And I've done many things that I would not say I'm super proud about. Um, I've been a overly, um, you know, macho type of guy who said and did really dumb, stupid things in my lifetime. And one of the things that has supported both of us in the work that we do, because in our bridge experience, we have people come who've been Man, abused through it by father, brother, grandfather. Like it just like we've been with we've some of the most the ridiculous things. And all of it, the, the thing for, for us as facilitators is to 
hear the facts and know the truth. Yeah. Right? Is to is to be above, you know, the story. The story of what happened. Also, So, for instance, um, when I was younger, I had a police officer kick me and treat me essentially like a like a piece of animal, right? Like 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 an animal. And for a long time, I didn't feel really well about police officers. Um, but having the compassion to understand what it would take, how hurt one would need to be in order to hurt another human being, and realizing that my anger never, ever reached him. It just hurt me. Mm, that's the poison. That... that um, rage and that disdain while I was quote-unquote shooting it at them it was affecting me more than anything and so you know love heals all love is is the ultimate power yeah and I want to touch on that because you know whether it's a rape or sexual abuse or you were cheated on or you feel mm -hmm. like you were screwed out of money like whatever your trauma is recognize that if you haven't healed it and you haven't moved towards it and really unpacked it, you are carrying that pain and that Everywhere. resentment and that judgment and you're waiting, you're waiting for the world to apologize to you. Mm -hmm. And you know, there's a difference between being a victim of something and having victim consciousness. And you can absolutely have, you may have been a victim to being kicked by a police officer, to sexual assault, to um, having someone screw you out of money. Or just a parent that didn't know how to talk and be a parent. Yeah, like, who didn't know how to love and, and give you what you needed as a child. Whatever your thing is, you may have been a victim of it, but that doesn't mean that you cannot be out of victim consciousness. Your consciousness around an event that happened in the past is what you're, you're currently in. Mm -hmm. So your present moment is now. Yeah. That thing that happened is not now. It only is in the now when you bring it into the now. And it is effective to bring it into the now to really face off with it mm -hmm. and process it from an objective, empowered perspective. And mm -hmm. we actually go through this whole process in our book. Yes, we do. So It's called the freedom process. Yeah, so there's a whole process that we have that allows you to face off with the things that you've been hoping will just go away because you know here's here's the hard news the world is not going to apologize to you no it's never it's never going to be fair ever and you know it, it would be really difficult to climb a mountain that didn't have you know rocks and, and and ridges and things of that nature and so to me this is all a part of the human journey you yeah. signed up for this just like you sign up to climb a mountain guess what you know that it's not going to be easy and we all signed up for life so guess what life is going to happen mm -hmm. and life is not just the pretty stuff it's not just like the falling in love and the fairy tales and the and the success and and you know it's not just that it's that's, everything that's what makes life so awesome though yeah. like the contrast is is fantastic like i love that i was in essence another not and i was like if you think about it cellularly and scientifically i Every was seven. another person yeah. right but let's just think about that you know i think it's fantastic that i went through all the things i went through that i got kicked out of schools that i was you know class clown and all of the other things and cheating my way through college and then deciding to to go through get my master's degree and doing it the right way to see if I was you know intelligent like everybody else all of that that contrast is so freaking beautiful and it's a part of the human experience and it's one of the reasons why I can be in relation to this being here mm -hmm. is because I'm not just this blank you know blob of innocence which we all are but you know what I mean. Like, we all have yeah. our, like, the things that we've been through make us the human we are. And, you know, like Preston was saying, we have an exercise in the Bridge Experience, our live workshop, where people share their traumas and they share their deepest, darkest secrets. And um, it's really powerful because as they're sharing, and people always ask us, like, how do you guys be with all that energy? Like, so much comes up. Mm -hmm. And they say, like, how it's so intense. How do you just be with that? And we tell them, like, while we hear the story, we we absolutely know it's not the truth of any of these people. Yeah. We see the truth of who you are. And just like when we meet the angry person on the street who's freaking out 
or you know the person who cuts us off in traffic while it may trigger us at first mm -hmm. we remind ourselves of the truth of people yes and guys just remember this everything that comes up is coming up so you can face it and release it yeah so if you have an experience, especially at the end of 2016, where stuff just keeps popping up and everywhere you look, you're Full like, dude, too. why are you following me? Yeah. Why? Why? Why are you me? here again? Yes. Jealousy? Right? Yes. Anger? Yes. yes, exactly. So if jealousy or anger or, or any of that stuff keeps following, it's because it's here for you to lean into it, Fearless. face it, and release it. Yeah. Right? So it can disintegrate. Mm -hmm. This person asked a question. Jacqueline, as a couple... How to uplift your partner that is feeling down. You both are high energy, what, but what do one of you do to lift the other one up who may have slipped into a low vibration? Yeah, we're not always high energy. We're not. Like, we're human, and we have like, Wah! and then we also have, Mrr. Yes. right? Our, our normal is different. Like, I have a new normal. Yeah, my new normal is definitely more joyous yeah. than what my normal was two years ago. And even when I fall, I don't fall as far because yes. we're in a practice. Yeah. So it's a habit. Yes. But to answer your question, um, sometimes Alexi just needs a hug. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just need her to rub my back and tell me it's going to be okay. And listen. And just and listen. say nothing sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. So how we lift each other up is we we catch the signals. We're with each other a lot. And I'm sure you are with your partner or whoever you love. We're with each other a lot. And so um, I usually know when she's off and she usually, I mean, it's it's really easy to tell when I'm off. Like I am just like, if I don't like you or I'm having an issue, like you, can't hide anything. I can't hide anything. Yeah. I'm like, don't talk to me. Um, so when those, sometimes you catch those cues, like today I could tell that she was, there's a lot, right? So she was off for a couple of days. She came back and there's a lot going on. So I went over and in the kitchen and just hugged, gave a little massage, rubbed her booty a little bit, kissed, asked, how can I help? How can I support? And bang, back in the game. That's what we do for each other. That's the point of being in a partnership. And I'll, I'll say this too. I think a big thing to take note, whether it's your partner, your friend, your mom, you know, whoever, someone close to you, if they're down, don't take it personally. Yes. Because that's really like the worst thing that you could do. Yeah. And it's the thing that we tend to go to first. Like, oh no, what did I do? I yeah. must have done something wrong. What, how can I fix it? Or, oh, they're mad at me again. Of course, it's yeah. my fault. It's Making always it all fault. Always right. about the, yeah. Right? So, so don't, don't take it personally. And it goes back to this whole com compassion piece where you really want to like tap into your compassion of, wow, this person I love mom, brother, sister, best friend, partner, work associate, this person who is amazing mm -hmm. is clearly being with something right now. I have no idea what it is. I have no idea what they need, but I'm just going to show up and be this space that, that I'm going to be able to hold them, be the space for whatever is necessary. And that's a big thing that we do for each other is not take it personally and just go, Hey, everything okay? We take it personally sometimes, yeah. for sure. Well, and but that's then how, shift right back out. That's of it. how we know this. That's yes. how, how we know that taking it personally doesn't work because we've tried it, guys. We've experimented for you. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> what we do is when we don't take it personally, we say, Hey, like, everything okay? How can I support? And it's like, I just need you to listen for a second, mm -hmm. or I just need to vent for a second, or um, I'm good, I got this. I'm just like being with something right now. Yeah. And it, really just holding the space and then suggesting something like Preston was saying that low-hanging fruit mm -hmm. change your state do something different say hey let's go for a walk let's take a break let's go outside let's go do let's go see a movie tonight yep we whatever can switch it up yeah that's what we do for, for sure Corey Johnson is in the building Corey if you guys are looking for branding They're uh, amazing. they are beast the from the east um yes. Okay, let's take some questions. I saw somebody ask, do we do couples counseling? Um, we do kind couples of. coaching. Coaching. Yeah. Counseling, not so much. Yeah, we are not counselors. We are coaches. Okay, let's take a couple. We're going to take a really interesting question. Ooh. This woman asked on my page. Um, where is that? Okay, she said, okay. Here we go, guys. What is it? Um, Tell us. Okay, what? so Lynn... Saren said, Shrain, can you please share your thoughts on open marriages and polyamory? What advice can you offer in dealing with sharing on any level, not just sexual? 
how to cope with jealousy and letting go of the belief that because you're in a relationship, they're yours. Mm. We talked about that last time, didn't we? No, we didn't talk about polyamory and open marriages, but we... Maybe I talked about it in soul school. Yeah, exactly. Oh, I did talk about it in soul school. Um, as a question. So, yeah, we're... We we have I have seven wives and no, I'm just <laughs> for us here's the thing who whatever that, that deserves the burden yeah exactly <laughs> don't do that dance don't do it don't do it what, whatever floats your boat we're all for for us we see power in in the union yeah. we see power in the commitment for me. And I'll say this, and I'm going to say this loosely. Not many people in my family have been faithful. So for me, um, some of the things that I've seen, um, f particularly and heard about, about grandfathers and things of that nature, um, tend to be closer to the base desires of the, the human experience. And so for me, I'm all about ev evolving and being bigger than than um, base desires. What is given exactly? So that like yeah. there's like there's like regular men and like what regular men do and it's okay and all of that stuff and like I'm in the conversation of how can I be the dopest version of me and what does that look like? When I before I met Alexi, there was a stint where I did six months of celibacy and then I came out of that and I started dating. But while I was celibate, I realized something that I had been letting my penis do most of the talking. And so if that, if that guy was going to be doing the talking while well, he's beautiful and he's amazing and I love him, if he's going to be doing most of the talking, then I am not much further along than an animal. Hmm. And so what I'm here to do is to levitate is to, uh, ed is to educate is to agitate is to, um, be an example of what it means to be an empowered man. And for me, in my relationship with my woman, A, I would not want to share her with her with anybody. Not in that way. Um, but when it comes to sharing her with the world, I mean, guys, she's with you just <laughs> as much as she's with me. Well, not, so, just. Well, not just as much, but like, I don't care. I'm not a very jealous type. That's not my nature. Um, yeah, I, I've had a jealous history for sure. Um, based on things that happened in my past and how I've dealt with jealousy is recognizing it's literally just a choice like it's literally just a choice and I remember when we first started dating because Preston is so outgoing and like talks to everyone whether you're an 85 year old grandmother or like a 20 year old I like hot people. chick like he talks to everyone homeless men like everybody I don't talk to 20 year old hot chicks that much though yeah you just talk to everyone. I talk to everyone. He doesn't discriminate. Like, yeah. Preston talks to everyone. And I think when I first started dating him, I didn't really understand that. And I took it personal. I was like, what? You know, I, of course, only saw the beautiful women that he was talking to. <laughs> I wasn't seeing, like, the homeless guys he was talking to. Um, but it was interesting because I had never been with somebody like that. I had always been with guys who were, like, really kind of reserved and not as outgoing and talkative to other people. So... It triggered my jealousy. It triggered my trust issues. It triggered all of it. And uh, it triggered it because universe, source, God, whatever, knew that we were supposed to be together and was mm -hmm. like, hey, you need to clear this shit if yeah. you're going to be with this dude. Exactly. Because this dude talks to people. And I recognized that it was literally just a choice. A couple times early in our relationship, I let jealousy get the best of me and mm -hmm. I questioned him and and it just created this massive divide with us. Mm -hmm. And I recognized after, it was like the second or third time where I had really let my jealousy win the conversation, mm -hmm. where I was like, oh my God, I'm going to lose him. I'm going to push this amazing man away who I love so much, who I actually trust. I actually trust you, but I didn't, I had all these like old bullshit wounds that were running the show. And it was a decision. I literally got so sick of myself and got so sick of like that running my conversation mm -hmm. that I was like, I'm done. Like I'm done. I'm choosing to just jump off a ledge, go all in and trust this man. And also trust that his intention is really pure. And I know that cause I know him. And does that mean we're both going to be perfect in our relationship? No, but our intention is not to do that, you know, and, and we like to never say never, but, um, we also know that we're human and, mm -hmm. and, 
things might get a little uncomfortable sometimes, but we'll be with it powerfully because that's the commitment we've made for to each sure. other. For sure. And everybody makes mistakes. We all do things. And, and you know, somebody just said it. It's a process, not an event. Yeah. Right? So we're in a process. We're in, a, we're in, in an unfolding. And so, um, especially when you first come together, you're learning, like, yeah. each other's flow. And um, if you don't have many tools in your tool belt... <laughs> In that process, it could be really it could be super confronting. Yeah, and and you know you can get into the victim and blaming and like how dare you? And this is we cover this in our book. Yeah, By the way, I'm going to say two things. One, we cover this in our book. It's it's called conscious and unconscious agreements. Um, number two, share this and make sure you watch to the end because we are announcing and. Awesome thing. Something awesome is coming. So if you have to get off, which you should not do, don't get off, make sure you come back and replay it and watch it to the end because we are dropping the mic in this BI. People are laughing at my water bottle. <laughs> yes, I saw that. Somebody wrote, Alexi's giant bottle and Preston's baby bottle. And yes, tell them the story about that because this is, I just got wifed, y'all. Um, First there's, of all. There's a new term, hashtag wifed. Basically, anything that happens, she gets the best part first, and then I get the leftovers. First of all, I took initiative and went to the alkaline water place. I'm the one who freaking brought it up in the first place, did I not? Yeah, and then I was like, great idea, go get some. Great and idea. she didn't go get it. So what did I do? Great idea, I'm going to go get one for myself. I went <laughs> on my way to my women's retreat. Jackie Fleming, we love you. That I was on the, I was on the snack and beverage committee mm -hmm. for the women's retreat. So I was like, ooh, I should get alkaline water for all the ladies because we're all like, no. we really love our health. No. And you have to buy containers. So I bought like a big jug nope. container. Then I saw this guy and I was like, wow, mm -hmm. this will really challenge me to stay hydrated <laughs> every day. <laughs> so I bought this for myself for the last few days and nope. I come home. I asked her, I was like, Is that, isn't that for us? And she was no. like, no, that's mine. That's like, mine. You wiped me. You wiped me again. You can share it. No. Nope. But it's just nice to have your own. This is what I get. I get a beat Which up bottle. Which is mine, bottle. by the way, too. It's hers. It's so he already got he already eaten. got a husband. No. I already got a husband. Yeah, I get the leftovers. He took I get the thing wiped. That with was a, with awesome the F. before I had this. That yeah. was an awesome bottle. Before Hashtag I had this. wiped. <laughs> w I F E D. She wiped, wiped me. Um, he husband me. Okay, so let's go to another question. Oh wait, so wait, let's we wanna like go back to this polyamory thing. So real quick about this. Um we are not in it. We've never tried it. It's not our jam. We have a lot of not friends who are in it. It's their jam. We don't have they a lot of friends it. who are in it. We have some friends who are in it. Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, it's happening. Yes, it's happening. Um, and it, it's in been, San Diego. It's been happening. <laughs> <laughs> it's been happening. But saying. here's the thing. So, Preston and I, what we've recognized, I just want to reiterate this: the beauty yes. of committing deeply to one human mm -hmm. is when it gets difficult. We've experienced with our, our friends who have went down that path, when it gets difficult, what happens is they go out with a conscious agreement and say, oh, I'm going to be with another person. Yep. And they essentially avoid the deep work. And, and everything is energy, guys. So if yeah. so, for me, this is a unit. We have an energy swirling here, yeah. right? And, and we're, we're headed towards something. We have a shared commitment towards something that's bigger than ourselves. And so for me, if a third or fourth party gets added to this energy swirl and they are not vibrating at the same level or higher than we are, I'm not willing to risk that because it's yeah. bigger than me. Yeah, it's and, and that's a big thing, right? Like, it's already enough to manage this. Yes. And our business. You know what I'm saying? She's crazy. You know what I'm saying? It's already enough. It's already enough. So for us, it's like bringing a, another energy into that, not our jam. Somebody just commented, I'm in it, hashtag Polly. Awesome. Nothing it, wrong with it. Yeah, we don't judge, but like it, it may or may not be for you. It's not for us. Yeah, yeah. we. I mean, we have had some friend couples who really went through it, um, playing that game. Yeah. Um, so if you do decide to like test it out, just make sure, for sure you're fully equipped to like really be with all the possibilities. Yes, we'll B say that. Blake Rose says, "Can y'all talk about the evolution of your relationship and how your previous partners prepared you for each other?" That's mm. something I talk about in the in the thing that the that the two and the three is just as important as the one at times. Absolutely. So yeah. Alexi dated a bunch of bums, and so they all helped her get to me. You know what I'm saying? Cause a brother named P. Now you can <laughs> take my birthday and try to make it cool. <laughs> That's messed up. You guys see what he just did? He told me not to do my bird dance so he could steal it that and try dance, and make it better. That dance is garbage. <laughs> Never do that dance again. Okay. Do it. 
So, yes. Partners. Um, yeah, so my exes are incredible humans. Um, I'm still in touch with them, and they're awesome beings, which is why I chose to be with them. Um, I, I was a serial monogamist before this guy. I love deep diving with people. So I had um, a couple long-term relationships with just amazing guys that are great humans. And they taught me different things. Like my relationship eight years ago, he taught me how to really tap in and share my feelings. Mm -hmm. At that point, I was unwilling to do that. And I was with him when I was really processing my sexual assault. And he taught me that it's safe to open up. And like, what a gift. Yep. What a gift that was. <laughs> my... Last ex before him, my long-term ex, um, was amazing. He taught me how to play and have fun and not take life so seriously. And... Not more than me, though. <laughs> he didn't beat me in play. I can tell you that right now. Preston loves to play, too, a lot. He didn't, he um, didn't beat me in that. But there's just so many, there's so many gifts that people have, you know? And, you know, reason, season, or lifetime. Yep. People come into our lives for a reason, season, or lifetime. And the love never goes away, guys. This is the thing we get to understand. Like, I'm, I'm still friends with one of my biggest exes, which is... Uh, I'm friends with her. Olivia, exactly. And Alexis is friends with her. her. <laughs> because the, the, the love doesn't go away. It transmutes. It changes. It changes form. It changes shape. But the love will always remain. And... Yeah. You want to know how you know it remains and how it's still there for you? If you think of your ex and you go and you, you know, you cringe in some way, what's you, there's healing under there. that yeah. is you actually feel hurt because you love the person and you're perceiving that they hurt you in some way. And so you're triggered by them. But the truth of the matter is, is under that, all that, that love still remains. It's like a river under, underground. It's still floating, mm -hmm. but you may not be necessarily as aware of it because you have the trigger going. Yeah. So it, it's, it's really a beautiful gift. You know, that's why I'm friends with all my exes as well, because they... What they, ex? Who are you talking to? <laughs> they truly allowed me to... to learn and discover different parts of myself that you know every single person even my friends you know my all my friends have served an amazing and beautiful purpose in my life whether i'm still friends with them or not because they came into my life for a reason season or lifetime mm. and if we actually mine for that stuff for the good stuff for the lessons for the way it expanded yes. us for the way it opened us instead of mining for the bullshit and like how they screwed us over and how we can't trust them and i can never trust anyone because yeah like what are you looking for <laughs> seek and you shall find and i think for me despite everything that happened with my exes like i've learned so much yeah. so much and yeah. they're amazing humans and i'm so grateful for them yeah I don't have any exes. I, you know, I was pretty much a man whore, a virgin, a um, man whore. Not even close. Chris was kind of a man whore. I was definitely not a man whore. You was I, kind of a man whore. I for sure dated people. <laughs> he was I a man whore. I definitely dated people. I was not a man whore. There's many people. Nope. Don't do that dance, though. Don't do that dance. Um, <laughs> I'm at peace with my exes. <laughs> don't do it. You guys are so awesome. Not sure about the friend thing with an ex. No, we're not saying you have to be friends with like, them. Well, we hang out with Olivia and Russell. Yeah, we do, but yeah. like that doesn't mean you have to. Yeah, if you can That's be like That's our version of polyamory. <laughs> you can be like you can love someone and also like have boundaries. Yeah. If that person like doesn't know how to be with you, like it takes two to tango in a friendship. Um and if they're not willing to be past the relationship, it probably isn't healthy to be with friends with them if you're in a new relationship yeah um but yeah i mean you know you know if there's some some unsettled things there and there are no rules to this relationship thing guys no everybody's trying to figure it out we, we all are you know we, we we took on some really interesting traits and things based on how society was you know shaping it and our entertainment and our movies really shaped how we play with each other yeah. but like there's no hard, fast rules on relationships. Jealousy is not something that serves you, though. I'll no. say that. Jealousy can be a cancer. It is a cancer, not can be. It is. It's like, it's gnarly. Nar, nar, bro. Nar, nar. Okay. I'm going to go to another question. New question. New. Guys, for those of you who are just coming on, be sure you share this video because you will be entered in the contest to win one yes. of our two advanced copies of this book. And we are going to announce very shortly the winner of the copy, the number one first copy of this book in just a little bit. And at the end, we're going to announce something really cool. Yep. So don't miss it. This is a great question from Tanya TKO. TKO. Tanya. Um, she said... How do you know when it's time to give up on a marriage slash versus working it out? Mm, good question. 
Um, hmm. Uh, I keep uh, belching a little bit. Hi, Miriam. It's the alkaline water. It is. So, how do you know? Because you just do. Um, you absolutely just do. You know when you know when you know. And some people stretch it out for freaking 15 years before they actually make the decision. But you knew 15 years prior and you just didn't want to face off with it because your ego didn't want to go through that process. You didn't want to feel hurt. You didn't want to be judged by your people at your church and your friend groups and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that you always know when the time is up. There is nothing on this planet that is here forever. It's always transitioning. And sometimes that happens at the end, the quote unquote end when you're 80, 90, 100 in your sleep and sometimes it happens three years after you meet the person, you have the baby the baby is the genius and the reason you came together in the first place and then you separate and are mad at each other because it was supposed to be your forever but when in actuality it was never your forever, it was your lesson. Blup! 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 Rastafari! Alright. <laughs> <laughs> Valerie said, um one of the statements, she said, favorite Alexi statement, and it's it's not mine, I'd love to take credit for it. Um, what are you pretending not to know? Mm. I say it quite a bit because Preston and I play with that question a lot. Yes. What are you pretending not to know? And the first time I heard that, I was in a training room at 18 years old, yes. learning about transformation, and I heard that statement, what are you pretending not to know? Mm -hmm. And it shook me, because there was a lot that I was pretending wasn't there. Yes, I. It was actually there, and I knew it. So. That's just pretending. Where's my necklace? There it goes. It's hard to see it back here. These are all our pieces that we collect from all over the world. This is from India. That's from Morocco. 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 Alexi picked that out because I, I was looking at another one and she was like, no, that one. And I was like, oh, you yeah, girl. Me. Uh, me, 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 me. Okay, me, another question. Me. So, me. Alexi and Preston time. Oh, so how do you arrange Alexi and Preston time when you're both Steve. such driven individuals? Great question. We are very driven. How do you separate that time up and make sure you don't encroach on each other's space and you both are satisfied about the amount of time you have together? Obviously the answer is communication, but how do you have that conversation? Do you literally schedule A and P time? We literally schedule we A do. and P time. Because here's, here's why, if you guys are driven and you're in a couplehood that's like driven and you're both ambitious and you're maniacs and you're on a mission and uh -huh. you're like ready to crush it, if you do not set aside A, time for yourself, Yes and B, time for each other, it won't happen. Yes. Especially when you have a mission that is like your life's purpose. Uh -huh. Like Preston and I are both severely addicted to our mission on this planet. Yeah. It's, it's why we get up every morning, it's why we go to sleep every night, it's why we take care of our bodies, it's why we do what we do. And if we do not schedule alone time for us and ourselves to like recharge and take care and fill the tank and schedule relational time with each other, mm. it, don't do it. Keep talking while you do it, it though. Just, you gotta keep talking. It just won't happen. Uh. It just won't happen. Uh -uh. So we literally are like, okay, tonight we're gonna do this. All right, tomorrow night we're doing that. At eight o'clock, phones off, computers down. Yep. We're gonna be. We call it like normal human time. Yep. We literally plan normal human time. Stranger Things on Netflix. Um, what's the other? Weird oh, we one? just saw a movie that was so good. The Leftovers, but um, Miss Sloan. Sloan. Miss Sloan was really interesting. So. Good. Um, Cheyenne said, "How do you find your life's purpose? It finds you, Mama. You can't be separate from it ever. It, your life's you're purpose. In it. You're in it and on it, and it will appear. Yeah. Uh, this when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Everything's a teacher." You're, yeah. you're in it right now. And I want to I want to add to this. So when we say purpose, we don't what we do and like the work we do, the books we write, the workshops we lead, the videos we make, all of that, that's like our mission. That's how our purpose evolves and shows itself to the world. Mm -hmm. I believe that we all have the same purpose mm -hmm. and it's that we're here to grow into our <clears throat> highest version of ourselves. We're here to unleash yes. and unlock our greatest potential. Oh. If you think of nature, nature is always teaching us and nature shows us that the purpose of all of nature is to live into its highest usefulness, to be its highest potential. So that's all of our purpose. You've already found it. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that manifest into your mission? That's a different question. And that's that's a more playful one too because mm -hmm. it doesn't feel as like pressurized and like yeah. intense. Like, I need to find my life's purpose. It's like, ooh, what mission do I want to take on? Exactly. And Preston and I take on new missions all the time. Like when we first started, the mission was videos. Ooh, we're going to share this. We're yep. going to make really cool content. We're going to share it in videos. Then that turned into, ooh, 
we have a mission to create online content because we want to reach people all over the world yep. in a course that can't come to us. Okay, yep. so that's our next mission. Ooh, next mission. Let's do like intensive workshops with people. Get them. And like get them to face off with their shit. And then let's have them be naked while they're doing it. The naked truth. <laughs> we have a naked workshop for those of you who didn't know, now you know. Oh, uh, bling, bling. You know what I'm saying? All of these have stories and I want to tell them, but we'll do it on another time. Okay. Um, yeah, who's angry? Um, who is Brian? What, Brian said something? Let's oh, how's Brian? Let's just send, oh, they said, how's Brian? I said, oh, there's mad faces. Why? Who's mad? Who's mad? Don't be mad. It's okay. We love you guys. It's Somebody's okay. putting mad faces. Uh-huh. Well, here's the thing. If you're putting mad faces, that means you're probably triggered by something. And great news. That's something for you to take a look at. So, guys, if you're ever feeling angry or triggered by anything, it's something for you to look at. It's not your external circumstances. It's you. Wake up call. If you're angry, it's not your life. It's you. So you get to look at that. If you're triggered, look at it. Or don't. And just continue to be angry and miserable. That's fine, too. Yep. Um, your choice. Really. Um, can, okay. Can you read this? Marzia Valente asks, The answer is within the question equals love. I would love to hear about your pr perspective on dyslexia. Preston's dyslexic or has been with that because it is regarded as a learning disability since the majority of normal people's brains work differently which supposedly makes them more able isn't this hilarious because our society promotes sameness when we have the bigger issue the general habit of disposing of patients care and time only allows for a few to stop and connect the dots I'm interested in promoting equality which can be achieved by celebrating our individual differences so let's talk about dyslexia AKA you talk about it because you have a deep experience with it. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. It's not a life sentence for me. It was very strong as a child and I am now able to, with techniques that I use and take off the internet and with breathing and putting my feet on the ground and all the other things that I'm learning to do, I'm learning to beat it, right? Yes, for a long time, and still shows up for me, I thought that I was the dummy, that I was the weird one, that I was not as good as everyone else because I was not able to be in the class with everyone else. I was in the class with people who were drooling and actually mentally not all there. It is not a disability in my opinion. It is actually a gift. It is one of the reasons why I can speak so damn well. So, yes, in the beginning, it freaking sucks, especially for kids. I spoke at a school... Um, all right, not at school. I spoke to, was it like 2012 year olds oh, yeah, in, in Perth, Australia. And I spoke about this and I promise you like 10 kids at the, I mean, all of them swore me, but like there was 10 at, um, the break that came up in tears saying that I'm dyslexic too. And people call me stupid and they have this experience. And I know that it's an overall thing that just feels really icky at times mm -hmm. um, because reading, you know, we're asked to read in class all the time and like aloud. And that's like anybody who's has even any, a little bit of dyslexia, that's like the worst thing is to be asked to read aloud in front of other people because then kids make fun of you sometimes. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, our society does promote sameness. Yeah. And we have standardized tests and standardized this and standardized that. Bullshit. And for so long, it's, it's one of the reasons why I don't promote college. Like, you know, I'm going to speak at two high schools um, in a couple weeks. And I'm going to speak my truth. I'm not going to say don't go to college, but I'm, I'm going to definitely let them know, like, you get to follow your dreams. Yeah, and guys, I think, you know, any disability, quote unquote, I hate using that word because Ooh, that's I, a I fun don't question. believe in that. Um any disability is really an opportunity, mm. you know, and I think a lot of people use their disabilities as an excuse as, as a why crush. Yeah. they can't do something and they become a victim to their disability. But then I was that for a yeah. long time. But like, guys, Preston wrote his own book and co-wrote a book with me. Yeah. And here's someone who's dyslexic. Took me a while, but I did it. <laughs> but he did it. Yeah. And we found a way. Like, you make a way out of no way. Going back full circle to what we talked about yeah. at the beginning. If you are, like, wildly committed to something, yeah. you make a way out of no way. There's a computer app, by the way, if anybody's really dyslexic, that you hit. It's called Dragon Dictation. Yeah. And you just hit the button and you talk into it, and then it just dictates your entire anything. So I use that sometimes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and bottom line is this, guys. Like... 
the people who are often in the worst case scenarios are driven the most. Bishop Tutu, Nelson Mandela. Because they had to. Like, yep. there was no other way. And, and you know, a lot of people use the excuse, oh, well, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. Thank God you weren't. Yeah. Because the people who are born with a silver spoon in their mouth often have zero drive or motivation to do anything. Yep. It's like businesses that, they call it the, the failure of success. If mm. you're successful, if you're at the top, what often happens is you get really comfortable and lazy there and you don't keep innovating and keep striving forward and striving to be better and expand. So if you weren't born with a silver spoon in your mouth, great news. You're probably going to be super successful because you have a mission on your heart. And you know, that's, that's how I feel. A lot of people hear my, my story about my parents, how like my parents are both entrepreneurs and at 12 years old, we had a, a restaurant. My dad was like, you want lunch money for school? You want money for clothes and school supplies, which I love school supplies. He's like, work at the restaurant on the weekends. So my sister and I would work at the restaurant doing whatever we could do to earn money. And people say, wow, well, like, didn't you just wish? As a kid, I hated it. I was like, why can't my dad just give me money like all the other people? Why can't my mom just give me money like mm -hmm. all the other kids? And like, that's not fair. And now as an adult, I'm like, thank God they did that. They taught me yep. how to make a way out of no way. And that's why I am how I am. I'm yep. freaking crazy. She is. I'm crazy. Um, This is... Kristen Morell, um, A, I love you. And you remember that time we broke into the LSU swimming thing and jumped off the, the highest <laughs> <That's> <laughs> awesome. diving board? And then you guys got caught, didn't you? Um, I didn't get caught. I, was, I never get caught. Um, what was the most fun thing you have done as a couple during your travels? Ooh, what made question. it so fun? That's a great question. And Christian, Kristen, your baby is amazing. Tell Matt I said what's up and I love him. Um, that was a, she is a part of a crew that I was with and they were my people at LSU. That's awesome. Um, I love you so much. I'm so grateful for you. And like, we were nuts back in the day. <laughs> Let me just tell you a story. We used to do this thing in, in the quad where uh, one of us would pretend like we fainted and be laying face down. And right when school, like the classes let out, everybody would walk by and, and then two of us would be like actors and be like, oh my God. And then everybody would flip out and try to do like CPR and shit. No way. And then we'd get up and run. That's kind of messed it's up. It's so stupid. It was so mean. We did so many ridiculous things. It was like right, be, right when Jackass was popular and like. So you were trying to do crazy stuff. We were doing crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, so funnest thing. Uh, we have so many like good memories. So here's this is a problem and this is such like Like this is so bad. I'm even saying this, but it's a problem because we travel so much like we travel for work and play It's like kind of intertwined. I know what it is, but go ahead Okay, we travel so much that we forget what where we've been and what we do Yes, like even this year I was looking through my phone to post a picture about something and I was like, oh my god We've probably been to a, I mean a lot of places yes. this year I don't even know how many, probably like 13 different countries maybe yeah, this year. a lot. Because it's entwined with our work. It's like, it's cool. what we do. Okay, but let's go, let's go into Yeah, it. okay, So go. top three. So one for me three. right now that's just going back, uh, Morocco on the camels oh, yeah. in the desert. That was great. Freaking on camels in the freaking Sahara, Sahara Desert, desert oh. with nothing. You can't see anything Except other than sand, sand dunes oh, and the amazing. sun setting. Ooh, and it was like, oh my God. How, like, this many people will ever get this opportunity, and here we are on some freaking camels. Camels. Spending the night in the freaking Sahara Desert. It like, so you good. have to be kidding me. I it felt was like amazing. a Bedouin. Yeah. Like a Bedouin explorer. It was You know what one level. of mine is? This is really great. So we went to Puerto Rico. It was our first trip together. First trip together out of the... Out of, like, the nine million. Yeah. Uh, we went to Puerto Rico, and I love Puerto Rico. Anyone from Puerto Rico on here, like, one of my... Puerto Rico! Uh, one of my favorite islands. Um, and I had been before, P had never been, one of my best girlfriends, Jackie, lives there, so we were visiting her and exploring as well, and, uh, Jackie's like, you know what, you should go to El Yunque, the rainforest, she's like, but don't go, it, they say the park opens at 9am, she's like, don't go at 9, go at like 7 in the morning, 6.30 in the morning, the park's not open, but it's nature, like, you just go in and hike and whatever, no one will be there, and sure enough, we went, and we're like the only people there. It's like so still and all you beautiful. hear is nature. Like you hear the wind in the trees and you hear all the little like 
crickets and uh -huh. the frogs and all this stuff and we're hiking down through this path and we come to the waterfall that's like normally packed with thousands of people yes and it's just us and we literally like we had our bathing suits on so we take our outer clothes off and jump in and the sun's coming up through like the, these trees in the rainforest and like it's starting to it shine and, and it was just like the most perfect moment because we were just like jumping around and being crazy and it was just us and it's like so so often we never get the opportunity to really just be with nature where it's not like a touristy thing yeah and that felt really cool the cave was really cool in puerto rico the too. cave was dope no here's here's one all right we just got a few fun stories um so not australia this year but the year before that we went to Cairns, and in a matter of 48 hours first we went um, diving in the Great Barrier Reef or snorkeling in the Great Barrier Reef yeah. and we saw a freaking shark and we followed it That's so which great. was amazing and all these super amazing tropical fish coming by and I was like super scared but then awesome and excited and I'd never done anything ever like the remote the Great Barrier Reef like it's dead now it's already dead so like mm, that's so, sad. so then the next day we go and get on these, what do you call those things? The ATVs? Oh, the ATVs. The ATVs through the freaking jungle, the rainforest, and it was like muddy and rainy. So we were like, <laughs> like for like an hour and a half, maybe longer. Through the rainforest. Through the rainforest, so kicking up mud, just going all over the place. And then that same day, was it the same day or the next day? The we, next day. Whitewater rafting. That was so fun. It was ridiculous. And we have no pictures of it because... You can't take anything can't with take, you. We didn't have our like GoPro at the time. And we literally got out, like once the rapids were done and the river's just like floating, yeah. we got out of the river and just like laid back because you have the floaty vests on. We just like laid back and just watched the clouds pass and we just let the river take us holding on to the raft and it was just like yeah so it was awesome. next level so good. for sure great question um jacqueline first of all said this is like a double whammy because i get to to hydrate and get a workout at the same yes, time. yes you do which is true but she also asked what's your biggest fear my biggest fear well both of us um biggest fear and then maybe that question a couple more questions guys and then we're gonna hop off um, and then we're, we gonna, we're gonna our make our first. announcement and make our for who won, and that person is on right now. I saw them, mm -hmm. um, and then and then uh, we have another announcement. Yes. So uh, biggest fear, um, so the easy answer is not truly living up to my potential. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that I am here to reach the masses. Um, and I'm doing it already. But what I'm talking about is millions and millions and millions and millions. And um, if I were to get in my own way enough to have that not happen, that would be, in my humble opinion, a, a tragedy. Um, the other biggest fear is, um, and it comes up, and I don't even, in, actually, I'm not even going to put it in a space because it's that like, nope. Um, but just losing anybody I truly love. I know that there's many dimensions, but that human part of me would probably go through a pretty tough time at first. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank yeah. you for asking. Yeah, that's a good question. I think um, I definitely share that, that first fear with you. I think my biggest fear is, like, I know <clears throat> why I'm here, and I know what I'm here to share, and I know what my life is here for. Like I know why my body is actually here on this earth. Mm -hmm. um, and to think that I may not like squeeze all the juice out of that feels kind of like, mm -hmm. oh. like I want to squeeze all the juice. And I think, I think that in a way actually really inspires me and it, it fuels me oh, in yeah. a lot of ways. And I use that fear to do things when I do not feel like doing it. Like there are definitely times I haven't quite a bit when like I would rather just put on the TV and watch Netflix, you mm -hmm. know, I'm easily. I'm tired a lot because I do a lot. But my my fear of not living into my fullness mm. and being fully useful and sharing all of my gifts and leaving it all out on the field um, keeps me going, you know, it keeps me going. And that's, it's a good thing. It's a good thing, but it's, it's also an interesting thing to not let the fear of it yeah. drive me and to actually be driven by the service of it. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then a secondary fear, 
Um, I would say thinking about family and kiddos mm -hmm. and all that mm -hmm. stuff is like... Nobody ever wants their kid to be hurt or anything yeah, like that. I just, I see like, I see really sad things happen or I hear of things that happen sometimes and it's just like, oh my God, my mm -hmm. heart hurts for people that have to experience suffering with their children. And um, I think that's another fear. Like, honest to God, I'm, you know, consider we're considering family very soon and... Babies! Babies! That means sex! <laughs> We don't have it otherwise. Um, and it just makes me like really think about all the things that, you know, could potentially happen when you bring a little life into this planet and, and how much responsibility that is. And I'm so excited for it, but it's scary at the same time, Hell yeah. you know, cause it's, there's so much there, so uh, much there. Uh. So great question. Um, okay. So I just want to say <clears throat> somebody left something. Did you read what that person said? Mm -mm. I wish I had your name. I think it was Carly. Oh, she's like the universe fan. Yeah, she's uh, like, who the heck are you two? I don't know how you ended up on my feed, but this is exactly what I needed to hear. So welcome. Yes. We are two crazy human beings who do transformation for a living and talk about crazy universal yeah. truths that we can all relate to. Yep. And our mission is to support people in living their highest, highest truth and their highest alignment. So welcome. Welcome. Somebody said, welcome um, somebody asked a question about addiction and then I just saw this. So I just want to tell you guys, Alexi has an addiction that not many people know Two. about. And I'm about to show you her addiction right now. Here I it goes. All day, all night. This pawpaw, this stuff, all day, it's all like night. It's like chapstick. She puts stuff on her lips. <laughs> All the time. I lit it quick. Got... Can I just show you guys something? This is funny. I'm just gonna take a second. So this was in my little pouch, just like my wallet slash phone slash everything pouch that I carry with me. So I had this in there. I have that in there. It's another lip item. I have that in there. That's another three. lip item. I have that in there. It's another lip That's item. Four freaking lip Hold items. On. Hold on. I have that in there. That's five. That's another one. Oh wait. I have that in there. That's another you one. You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> so, I this think is, that's it. This is what I'm talking and about, And then guys. the rest is like Indonesian money and my card case. So somebody <laughs> asked how you deal with addiction. Um, <laughs> Sometimes got, you just say yes. She no. <laughs> got six freaking lip things. I do have everywhere a bomb addiction. For sure. I go. I see, she just be like, like, she got some soft lips. I'm not mad. Great soft lips. You have a lotion addiction. Can we talk about I, your addiction? I don't, I would rather not put lotion on. My mom freaking lotioned me so much that my skin gets so dry that I have to put it on. True, he has a lotion addiction. My skin sure. is like, yo, you better put something on me. Guys, um, the struggle is real, for real. Yes, it is. All right, guys, we have come to the end. And that means we are about to announce the winner who won the book. That means we're going to need your address because we're going to send you the damn book. Yeah, so um, don't put it on the Facebook Live unless you want 20,000 people to yep. read your address Just send, and know where you live. Send me a message because Alexi doesn't check Facebook messages. Sometimes. <laughs> sometimes she does I sometimes. Do. <laughs> sometimes not so much. Send me a message because... You're the winner of this. Yes. Are we going to announce? Do you want to announce? Yes. Okay. So the winner, and when I say your name, go ahead and... This is my winner face. Do the crip walk. Um... So the winner of Now or Never, our new, brand new book, um, going to be out in stores January 27th, uh, not January, like, December 27th. Really? January? You know what? Somebody left a comment earlier. They were like, Preston, we love your TMI. Um, um, so December 27th, this is coming out. Um, don't do this dance when you get it. Um, don't do it. Or do it. You won. And record yourself. The person who won this book. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, is Charles Wilton. Ah, yes, my man. Yeah, Big Charles. Charles. Good stuff, we my brother. You. Jessica, we love you too. You're and I'll amazing. probably see you this weekend. Jess. Um, Hi, Jess. Charles. She's my birthday twin. Make sure you comment if you're still here. Charles, we love you. You're amazing. You do and you not... got a copy of the book, so make sure you send him your address. Yes. Hey guys, I'm putting something into the comment field right now. Here's our exciting news. Here's the exciting news. Now, so here we go. So if you like this live, I'm going to do it like 10 times. Yep. Just so you can see it, and it's really obnoxious. If you like this live, and you're like, oh my god, these humans are awesome, and they're weird, and I like they're crazy. I dig they're crazy. Stop. It's kind of awesome. You better stop. I okay, put like yeah. 10. You can't miss it. I can't miss it. So we are actually doing a free training on the principles in this book. Like straight up training. Not like 
uh, random questions everywhere. Not we like Facebook Live yeah. Jam. We're, we're gonna like train on the five must-have secrets dive. that you need to know to have a powerful 2017. So oh. we want to serve you guys in the highest capacity. We want to share some of these golden nuggets in this book. Rastafari. And we're gonna share the five must-have secrets that you have to put in place to have a killer, epic 2017. Yes, so if you want to be on that, I'm gonna put it in again. Just in case you missed it, here there, it goes. There we go. One more time. That Lewis link right there. House. Lewis, Lewis House. Lewis House is in the house. Glenn Money Glenn is Money back in the, in the building. Yes. So, guys, I put the link a thousand times. If you can't see it, you need to check your eyesight because it's in there. Yes. Click the link and go to the thing. Rastafari. And get our training. It's happening live tomorrow. Here's my training dance with a pen in my hand. Is it tomorrow? Ooh. Oh, look at this, babe. This no. is a cool Don't do that dance either. <laughs> Definitely don't do that dance. That's fun. No. No. That's a problem. Um, <laughs> it's happening tomorrow, 6 p.m. Tomorrow, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. We're going in tomorrow. Yeah, and guys, if you're like, well, wait, I live in Europe. It's like 3 a.m. How am I going to like see this? Register. Register anyway, and you'll get a replay. Email. Watch the replay, because we're going deep in. We're going in. Got Bring it. your friends, tag a friend, be like, yo, you need to be there. This is the jam. This is the business. Yes. These are my people. Indeed. And yes, Lewis rocks. Lewis, we love you. We love you, Lewis. If you guys don't listen to Lewis's podcast, do it. It's pretty awesome. It's it called is. The School of Greatness. Yep. It's got some great guests on there. You can find my hubby on there, too. Uh -huh. The one guest he didn't have yet, though, is this one. He's missing Everybody out. send Lewis an email right now and say, listen, <laughs> we need Alexi Panos and Preston Smiles, Both but we could us. just do Alexi. Charles, you won. So we love you. I will take, uh, what did it say? He said, I would take a year to read it, but fuck it. Charles, you got we will, it. we'll gift you an audio version. How yeah, about that? We'll, we'll send you the audio version, my Boom. brother. Like, um, we will find a way. We will make a way out of no way, Charles. Yes, so guys, register. Alexi is putting that link in one more time. One more time. Register for this. This is tomorrow at 6 p.m. Send it to your friends. Let them know. They said they can't click. You should be able to click. Soon as this ends, go back. We're going to put it in there three more times. You can click, guys. It works. Yes. It works. I just tried it. And guys, this is again, the five must have secrets training from our book. This is not a Facebook live where we're just going to jam and have fun. We're going to have fun because that's what we do. We're going to have but fun. But we are going to go deep on the five distinctions you need to really jumpstart your new year. I'm going to be so. butt naked doing it. Possibly. Mm -hmm. Maybe me too. Maybe just from the bottom down. From the bottom down. Keep I don't excited. have no pants on right now. You know what I'm saying? That's hot, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Stop. All right. We got to go, guys. We love you. You guys are awesome. We love you. We love you guys. Oh, and if you want to be entered to win our last copy of our share brand new book before it comes out, this share this video. Deuces. Oh, bloop, 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 Rastafari.